Hey, all right. We are live from Occupy City Hall. We are back. We are back. We took a little small break, a little potty break. Hope nobody called the police. Uh, we are still set up in front of a portion of this 815 day weekend fiasco that's going on behind us. Uh, we are still here uh, speaking about the uh, untold side of of Rockford, Illinois, the untold side of the 815. Uh, and in our efforts to talk about the untold side of the 815, uh, we have moved further down from being in front of City Hall uh, to be in front of Little Mike Sago Jr.'s uh, memorial here where he was, uh, again, murdered by... What's I just up? To bring you a drink, man. Oh, thank you I'm so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate right? it. Thank you. Thank you. I know you was up here. I appreciate it. Too. Uh, but, yeah. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have a good day. Stay safe out here. Uh, looks nice. Uh, and so, uh, <clears throat> again, uh, that is why we are out here. Rest in peace. Rest in power to little Mike Sago, a champion of the struggle. Uh, Joseph McCormick is across the street, a champion of the struggle. Eddie Patterson across the street, champion of the struggle. And Mikey Guzman, who is coming up on a one-year anniversary since he was mur- uh, since he was killed, ran down by Kurt Saw- Sawyer Sawther, uh from the South Beloit Police Department. Uh, so that is what we are doing out here. But I am gonna I'm gonna take a sip of this. Let's see what this about. Okay, okay, I see. That's nice. Uh, but we want to let's talk about language. This live is about language, and I want to talk about it because uh, I will not lie. I will not see. I won't hold you. There are times where after something happens, I think, well, maybe I didn't need to say that, or maybe I didn't need to say this. Uh, now, what I prefer is that I don't have to think. Well, maybe I shouldn't have uh, uh, hit this person, or maybe I shouldn't have uh, punched this person or kicked this person. Uh, you know, I prefer to think maybe I shouldn't have said something. It is the, in my opinion, it is what we are aiming for uh, when we talk about making a more humane society. To be able to get somebody to understand the severity uh, in which their the implications of their actions have. Ooh, this wind blowing. Without having to uh, phys- and to disagree, without having to physically uh, impart your will. Uh, and now I know some people who will say, well, uh, part of that too is. Uh, not talking to people a certain way or not saying certain things to people. Uh, I do believe that we are in a position where there are certain things that are happening around us uh, when it comes to memorials being torn down in which if you just sit idly by, uh, uh, if it just sit, if sit idly by while people are uh, tearing down these memorials, uh, you get into a place where everybody wants to do it. If they don't feel there's any type of reaction from it, and that is where we are at as a, as a community in Rockford, Illinois, is where uh, state sanctioned violent ha- violence happens, uh, and nobody believes that there, and nobody uh, collectively has any type of reaction. In Minneapolis, when George Floyd was murdered, the reason that uh, uh, Officer Chauvin and these other officers uh, went through this, uh, the process that they went through was because the community had an op- uh, equal and opposite reaction to the action to the action of killing George Floyd. The same thing in Ferguson. There was an equal and opposite reaction to the 21st lynching of Michael Brown. And until we get to a place where we are collectively, as a community, uh, conscious of the fact that there has to be reactions to state-sanctioned violence. There has to be reactions to these acts of racism. There has to be reactions uh, to these acts of police terrorism and mass incarceration. Uh, We get into a place in which we always play the role of the victim. Uh, And so when people come down here uh, and and, and pour water out on the chalk, uh, I'm going to cuss them out, uh, I, and I think that anybody else who was down here should cuss them out. Uh, when the first time I seen Denzel Duvant, uh, the young man who was uh, brutalized by the Rockford Police Department while he was handcuffed, the first time I seen him when he popped up on the Zoom screen uh, after being in jail and being beat up and kicked, the first thing he said was, they beat the fuck out of me, Judge. He didn't try to uh, uh, edit his language or make sure he what he said was appropriate and, or friendly for kids or kids' ears could hear. He said the truth. He said what resonated to him. He said what was genuine to him. And that was they beat the fuck out of me. And when you see that picture, you don't think, oh, they beat him up pretty bad. No, you think they beat the fuck out of this guy. That is what you think. 
and and when you uh, don't give, we have we're in this place where uh, these words exist for a reason. Uh, uh, words exist for a reason. To for us to act like uh, these words, uh, you know, are relegated to uh, not being used in, in certain contexts is ridiculous. We just had a president who was cussing uh, like it was a fucking SN, uh, not SNL, cussing like he was doing a stand-up sketch for HBO regularly, regularly. The same people who get mad at the fuck the police being written on the talk are the same people that voted for the man that says he grabs him by the pussy. Same people. The same people that'll get mad at uh, writing all cops are bastards are the same people that uh, voted for a man that says he grabs him when he's rich. You can just grab him by the pussy. His exact words. And so again, again, when we start talking about language and we start speaking about language, uh, we get into a place where people pick and choose when certain language bothers them. People take their kids to a PG-13 Avengers movie and, and hear shit and hear uh, random cuss words happen. Uh, but then if that same word is used and somebody advocating for justice for a person of color, uh, then they're upset and then they're bothered. Or they'll, listen, they'll ride around listening to music. They listen to some rap music uh, with their kids or ride around uh, going to, they go to clubs and bars listening to rap music and be fine with the language of rap music. Uh, but then when they see fuck the police, it's just, it bothers them too much. Or all cops are bastards, it bothers them too much. Or fuck time or whatever the uh, words that they uh, choose to uh, become hypersensitive to. <clears throat> Uh, and then again, when we, because uh, this is language, that's what we have labeled this. So we're just going to have a, a stream of consciousness about language. I'm just going to light this blunt here in a second. We're just going to talk about language. Uh, the other thing about language is that uh, people are using language to deflect from the issue. Uh, people are using language to deflect from what it is that's being brought up. Uh, instead of asking the question of, why are people saying fuck the police and I personally hold the police in such high regard? People are saying, uh, why can't, why are you, why are you writing fuck? Why can't you write fuck? Because that diverts from the issue. Because they, uh, again, this is what happens when you have people who uh, are uneducated about an issue. Uh, they want to find that whatever the most low hanging fruit is to divert from uh, talking about the issue at hand. Uh, the same thing, somebody who, uh, uh, I've had people say, well, they're with their kids. They're walking with their kids. And, what the hell is that? It's a motorcycle. That's a song they're playing. Uh, they're walking with their kids, and uh, they don't want their kids to see this language. They don't want the, their kids to hear these words. Uh, and, and, you know, I really do wonder how many of these people, because it is a percentage of these people who, uh, when they argue with their wife, those are the words they use. When they're watching a football game, drunk with their friends, those are the words they're using. That's the language they're using. Uh, they kid on the high school football team. That's the language the high school football coach using. They, the basketball player that you got uh, put up uh, on your, that your kid got pictures on the wall of, that's the language he used when he out there playing basketball. So it's not that you opposed to this language and that this language offends you in this uh, extreme manner that you can't get over. It's that what this language is being used in defense of or in advocation for is what bothers you. Uh, that's, what that, that's what is at the root of it. Uh, and so we get into a place where uh, that becomes a, a version of respectability politics that they want to be played. Uh, and I believe that it is a mistake for us to uh, play that uh, game of respectability politics or to play the role of the or to try to adapt the role of the victim. Uh, I think that is a very difference between adapting the role of nonviolence or uh, adapting the role of not being the aggressor uh, than it is uh, adapting the role of being uh, subservient or submissive or uh, or being victimized uh, I would not uh, and again if uh, one of the things that uh, happened yesterday is you know I probably shouldn't say this I need to say this I said something similar to this to KKK Clyde uh, uh, but I told them old ass people that they ain't got much longer to live and that's a fucking statistical fact and maybe I don't got much longer to live either but the difference is the difference being is that I uh, my life is, is symbolic my life is symbolic. So when my life is uh, uh, taken or no longer here on this earth, uh, there will be uh, some type of uh, 
hopefully again you know we're, we're, again we, we we're, this is a theory it's a theoretical conversation uh uh, uh benefits from it uh because of the things i've dedicated my life to, uh, life towards uh in this last year and a half and the thing i'll continue to dedicate my life towards uh, as opposed to somebody who's a fucking racist bigot who's up in years who uh statistically even if they was to uh, uh be uh, uh live a, a full rest of their life it's not a very long full of the rest of their life uh are out here uh, doing this in their last years in their twilight years they're out here doing this you don't got no kids no grandkids no great grandkids that you could be uh, with and so when somebody comes out and does something like that man hell yeah I'm cussing they ass I'm cussing they ass the fuck out and I'm trying to find the most uh, uh, without being uh, uh, prejudiced Bias, misogynistic, homophobic, transphobic, or any of those things. I'm trying to find the most worst shit I can say to hit you in your fucking chest. Yes, the fuck I. Yes, the fuck I am. I want you to feel exactly what these people's families felt uh, when seeing when they uh, when their family members was killed. I want you to, to know exactly how passionate people are about the things that you out here doing. I want you to hear every bit of it. And again, uh, the fact that you can, uh, people can watch a video of a man, a grown uh, fucking 60, 70 year old fucking old ass man with his fucking 70, 80 year old wife out here uh, power washing uh, the uh, sidewalk, power washing uh, uh, the name of a 16 year old who was murdered by the police. Shot in his back while crawling away. Uh, watching the name of a man who was said to commit suicide in the jail, whose family said that he was not suicidal, whose family said they spoke to him the day before he was not suicidal. Uh, washing off the memorial in the names of uh, uh, Eddie Patterson, a man who routinely is criminalized for being murdered in this city, for being black and being murdered in this city, he is criminalized. Eddie Patterson was shot multiple times in the back while being inside of his own vehicle and then after being shot and killed while being inside of his vehicle and losing control of the vehicle, uh, Jamie Cox uh, uh, died from being inserted inside of this man's car door. And every time that, uh, the anniversary that passes, you have a city that uh, only uh, speaks about one death, and that's the death of Jamie Cox. It's never a, uh, the death of Eddie Patterson that's spoken about. You live in a city in which when a, a church had a Black Lives Matter sign up uh, in honor of these type of issues, they were told they had to take it down if they was going to have a memorial for Jamie Cox and Eddie Patterson. That is the type of city that we live in. When they out here celebrating 815 Day, that's, eight, that's some 815 Day facts for your ass. So when you when those that when that's the the reality of uh, the city that we exist in, you damn right people right and fuck Rockford, uh, fuck the city of Rockford, fuck the mayor of Rockford, uh, fuck 815 Day, uh, fuck City Market, fuck all these things. You damn right because that's what the that's what the word fuck was put in the English language for. If you was to go back and find out whenever fuck was put in the English language or fuck you was put in the English language, I promise you 100 percent that it, it fit the situation that that we in right now in this city. But see, this is the other reason, too, that they don't want that type of language being used when it comes to these people who want to play the respectability politics game is because they want to keep up the facade and the image of the police department. Because one of the things that has taken a big hit in this last year and a half is the image of the uh, Rockford Police Department. It's the facade of, of the Rockford Police Department. Is, uh, the smoke and the mirrors uh, effect is not anywhere near as strong as it once was. And again, uh, when you don't properly address how you feel about somebody, when you sugarcoat it, when you sugarcoat it, it makes it so that uh, later on, when this issue continues to persist, if you try to go back and uh, deepen it, it be, it's more, it becomes more complicated. If you uh, allow yourself to be victim, if we would have started this out by every time somebody came and did this, we just was quiet, didn't say nothing, didn't do nothing. Uh, Dent Finn, we just, just, we just gonna take it. Just take it. Don't do nothing. We would get into a place in which it would become harder every time we did that uh, to vocalize how upset we were, uh, to speak about how we felt about things. It would become harder each time to do it. Uh, 
And then the same thing, it, it paints the picture that the situation is not as drastic as it is. Language is there for a reason. So that way, when you are in a situation that calls for someone to be called a motherfucker, you can use it. And if it's other people around, oh, that's a, that make their dog ears pop up, pop up. Motherfucker, what you calling a motherfucker for? What's going on? And so I fully believe part of the reason that they want us to, that people are trying to be language police and say what words should be said and what words shouldn't be said is that they don't want to continue to be tarnished. They don't want the perception of the city to continue to be tarnished. And if the, uh, if it was, and see, this is the thing. The problem is that they're not speaking about the My fault, y'all. Uh, they're not speaking about the reality. Because, see, what needs to be destroyed is the narrative of Rockford, the, the fabrication of what Rockford is, the perception of what Rockford is. And what has to be put in its place is the reality of what Rockford is, is the reality of what this city is and the, the institutions in this city are. Or we will never get to a place in which we can absolve ourselves of these evils. And so, again... That is, that would be the danger of not using the language that's appropriate for these situations. We are in drastic situations. In dra when somebody running up in your house, shooting you, you're not trying to make sure you don't cuss when you're trying to express. You, oh, shit, fuck, oh, God, you, you, whatever you got to say, you trying to, you were trying to get the fuck up out of there. You in an extreme situation. Now, I'm sure some people, if you talking about religious beliefs, you know, maybe people got religious beliefs and that's what keep them from that. That's a completely different conversation. We having a political conversation in this in this moment. Uh, and really, we having a really we should be having a human conversation. But because uh, black people are not considered human in this country or have never historically had the rights granted to them of human beings, we have to have a political conversation. Uh I'm trying to think about some of the other things and the language thing is something that's very uh this is not a to me this is more of a generational thing uh i don't i can't think of any 20 ish teenage -ish people who've disagreed with this or disagreed with our stances uh coming out and saying something in person about the language usually the language is a 30 mid 30s to uh and up 35 and up type of thing uh, and again, so I think that the language is a generational divide. When you think about uh, TV, when I grew up watching TV, it was certain words you didn't never hear on TV. And now with streaming and uh, different channels and cable channels and stuff, it's certain uh, words that's normal place to be on TV. Uh, same thing, it was a time when... It's a hole in it. I ain't wrote this right. Uh, it's a, it was a time when uh, when it wasn't commonplace in music to use the words that people use. You know, I don't know how many people understand uh, why the parental advisory sticker is where it sat on the CD. Uh, it's because it was a time where they were trying to make it illegal for certain artists to say certain things on music. Uh, and so it became a court battle and a court struggle uh, for them to be allowed to do it. And what uh, manifested from that was the parental advisory explicit lyrics uh, uh that's on a label that comes on albums or I guess now that's on the album cover on streaming. And so we have to understand that generationally, every generation has been more uh, uh, sturgeon or more uh, specific about language or more caring about language. As generations go down, uh, language does not become uh, as much of a make or break uh, a deal. There are some people who, because of the language you use, will never try to take time to understand the issue. Will never take time to try to uh, uh, to empathize with these people and these people's families, uh, simply because of language. Uh, but what you will find is that the people who allow language to be an, inhi an inhibitor uh, uh, towards uh, being anti-racist, or people who allow uh, language to be an inhibitor towards uh, being uh, an advocate for the struggle are people who will find anything to be an inhibitor. If it wasn't language, it would be something else. Uh, to the people who are upset about this chalk, if we didn't write fuck the police or if we didn't write use any cuss words, they would still be upset about the chalk. They still be upset about the memorials. It's no cuss words on these memorials. 
these memorials say it's a picture of, uh, of the victim. It's a picture of the champion of the struggle. I don't want to stop using the word victim. These are champions. Mike, my little Mike Sago is a champion of the struggle. This is pictures of the champions of the struggle, and then it's their name and when they were killed. It don't say fuck the police. It don't say uh, uh, police is motherfuckers. Police is all bastards. It don't say none of that. It's just the names and the pictures. And yet, it's still you see white these uh, white people going crazy. Like we uh, we had a, a segment earlier where we spoke about uh, a man named a man that we've titled the slasher. Who goes around slashing the faces of all the black people on the memorials? A uh, uh, different. We've had a man named KKK Clyde who goes around and he tears down the memorials. He tears down the memorials, and so we see that uh, it's not simply the language. Uh, the language is the excuse that's used uh, because, again, the memorials no language. Uh, Denzel Duvant. We had a picture of Denzel Duvant that we would keep on the trash can, and I shit you not. Uh, at least 10 times a uh, white person uh, broke the sign or took the sign in some manner. White men every time. One time a white man pick, pulled up in a pickup truck, grabbed it, threw it in his trunk. And in the back of his truck, took off. Uh, one time it was a white man uh, who punched the sign. Think about that. Think about that. This is a sign of a picture of a man who had been beat up. Think about the type of mindset. Oh, we got we got to put him in a group. Oh shit, we got to put him in a group. We ain't group. We ain't categorize him. Uh, I remember. I remember later. I remember later. But so, anyways, he punches the sign. Uh, says, "Go back to Capital Wild, nigger," or something like that. And then hops on the. He damn near get hit by a bus. He trying to get away. He damn near get hit by a bus. He hop on a bus and leave or whatever. And so uh, I'm saying that to say that there was no cuss words written on the, the picture of Denzel Duvon. No cuss words, but still this man found uh, an excuse and a reason to be against it because of the inherent racism, the inherent uh, uh, white supremacy and white nationalism uh, that was at home inside of him. Uh, and so again, right now we're just... Uh, right now we're just talking about Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Talking about language. Uh, one of the things that has been a, a common... <laughs> excuse me, my fault. <laughs> one of the things that has been a common occurrence... <laughs> my fault. <laughs> yeah. My fault, my fault. One of the things that has been a common occurrence is that people have objected to the language that we've used. Uh, and again, I wonder uh, if after... If somebody was to come and tell you that your 16-year-old son was shot three times while he was crawling away, uh, if in that moment you would be okay with somebody telling you uh, but be careful what language you use to talk about this. Uh, if after your father was murdered by a police, uh, and you wanted to, you were finna express how you felt, I doubt somebody would say to you, uh, "Make sure you don't use any profanity as you're talking about this." Uh, uh, I think that that's where we have to remember that this is not the, this is not the '60s, where even in the '60s. I know, maybe Dr. King wasn't doing it, but I know they was cussing these fucking people out, these racist white people and these police out. Uh, but even still, this is not the 60s in which... And then, you know what, even then, I don't even, I don't want to do that, because sometimes you have to be careful. Sometimes when trying to explain certain things, you don't want to uh, try to justify your actions by uh, casting a, a, a different light on things that's happened in the uh, past. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna do a little good deep little dive into language. I ain't gonna stunt. Uh, what time is this? 248. Then they need to get something to eat. Then they need to get something to eat. Then they're gonna have to take a food break. Take a food break and pop back. Uh, All right. Uh, this was cool. This was cool. This one wasn't as good as the other two segments. The other two segments was better. Go back and watch the other two segments. Uh, but again, as long as this uh, event is going on, as long as this is happening, uh, we're going to be outside. Uh, so share this video. Go back and watch the other videos uh, from 814 Day, from 815 Day Weekend. Uh, we'll be back. We will be back. We outside. <laughs>